Um, the fabric district in Tokyo is called Nippori yes. and um, I've been told that it is really big and I'm very excited. <laughs> so I'm gonna take you all with me as I go and explore Fabric Town. Yay! Yeah, good job. It's big all right. Nippori's fabric district has a total of 90 fabric, bead, haberdashery and craft stores. These are all of the fabric stores. For reference, that's 90, 90, 90. fabric stores. We've been to three, three so far. This is the damage that's already been done. We can't go to 90. <laughs> I could like spend a whole two weeks just here. <laughs> Make sure you pick up one of these guides to help you get around Fabric Town. These guides can be found in stands at the entrance of many of the fabric shops. However, I think that the best method of exploring Fabric Town is to simply walk up and down the kilometer long street and go into any store that piques your interest. I'm going to show you around just a couple of the fabric stores that I visited, just so you can get an idea of the magic of this place. If you're a DIYer of any kind, this place is actual heaven. In this one trip to Fabric Town alone, which only lasted a couple of hours, I managed to go into about 10 stores before my arms were suffering from the amount of fabric I was carrying, not to mention my bank account. The number one fabric store that I suggest going to if you only get a couple of hours here is the famous Tomato. There are four tomato stores on this one street, with one of the tomato stores having five huge floors of fabrics in just about any print that you can imagine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Whoa. I thought only two. Good luck, good luck. <laughs> fluffy fabric. So many of you have asked me to recreate the blue fluffy shorts from Make Thrift Buy, like episode four. I can finally do it. Just had to go all the way to Japan for it. I'm pretty dedicated, you guys. And if you're traveling and you need to save room in your suitcase, there's plenty of smaller items like buttons and patches and beads and lace and all the notions you could want that will take up considerably less room on your flight back home. And finally, this here is my fabric haul. I actually didn't do too badly. This is about mm, two and a half, three kilos. When you go fabric shopping, and especially here, it's good to go with a goal in mind so you don't just end up with a bunch of random crap. My main goal for visiting Nippori was to find some particular fabrics that I haven't been able to get my hands on in either Australia or online because Nippori has everything. So let me show you what I got. The first thing is fluff is gonna go everywhere. Let me show you anyway. Fluffy blue fabric! In the end I decided on a pastel blue color instead of a dark navy blue because I'm much more likely to wear this color than a dark blue and I have a bias towards pastel colors. I was also really keen to get some knitted fabrics, like not just knit fabric but knitted, I'll show you what I mean. Like this. I've never really sewn with these kind of fabrics before, so I'm really excited to see how it goes. So they were the two things that I needed. I also, of course, ended up with some fabrics that I probably like, I mean, they weren't on my list. I didn't technically need them, but I needed them, if you know what I mean. Because I mean, obviously I needed dog fabric. Look at it, it's so magical. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it, but I have a meter of the stuff. Maybe I'll do a video on what you can do with one 
meter of fabric, shorts, a crop top and short set, a billion cute dog pouches, endless possibilities. And I guess I was going for a theme here. Here's my second dog fabric. French bulldog fabric on a denim colored background. And the final fabric that I needed, but didn't need, but definitely needed. This polar bear fabric. It's a comic about a polar bear and a penguin talking about cooking together. It's the best. It's a quite thick, sturdy cotton. So I wanna make a backpack hopefully out of it. Gonna learn how to make them next year in 2017. And if I have any leftovers, endless makeup pouches. And all these fabrics, best that I could tell, along with most of the fabrics I saw in Nippori, are uh, made in Japan. Although obviously it was a little bit difficult to actually ask people because of the language barrier. But on the bottom edge, the selvage of the fabric, it'll often tell you where the fabrics are made so you can figure it out. I've been posting a lot of photos and some videos of my trip over on my Instagram if you wanna go and see what I've been up to so far. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you all next time. Bye. A huge thank you to Kyla for meeting up with me and taking me around Nippori. I have been an admirer of Kyla's work for years now, so it was a dream to finally be able to meet up with her. And she was just as lovely in person as she is online. Kyla's mission is to change the world through positivity and kawaii culture, and she runs the most wonderful blogs and YouTube channel, works for Japan Lover Me, and helped establish the kawaii Philippines movement. If you like journaling, definitely check out her YouTube channel, and if you don't like journaling, I promise you'll be addicted after watching her videos. <laughs> so random, in need for either to buzz right here. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making these videos possible. To become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.